this point, we've talked about how to create a basic website using HTML coding. Now let's move on to the cascading style sheet or CSS. So what is CSS? CSS is the language we use to style an HTML document. CSS describes how HTML elements should be displayed on that document. So some details that you should know. CSS stands for cascading style sheets. CSS describes how HTML elements are used to display on screen, paper, or in other media. CSS saves a lot of work. It can control the layout of multiple web pages all at once. And finally, external style sheets are stored in CSS files. Each tag can be stylized individually on a website. So for example, if you add a paragraph to your page like this one right here, where you can see the P tag, closing P tag um, for paragraph and hello world inside. If I wanted to change this text on my website to blue as a color, um, you can change it by linking to it like this. So you can see that I have the P tag from my initial tag here, a curly bracket, color, colon, um, the color that you want to change it to, which there are a whole bunch of different color codes that you can use besides the basic colors, and followed by that semicolon and closing curly bracket. This is an example using the external style sheet. Before external style sheets came to be, everything was coded directly into the HTML document. So you could use CSS after they developed it, but it was all intermixed in that same document and was pretty chaotic. You can't do the things that you can do today on an external style sheet just by embedding it into your document. But here's another way that you can do it, and we have tried that in class already. P style, so this is my opening paragraph tag, and just inside of that tag, I'm adding style equals with that same CSS color colon blue semicolon, and it would change that text the exact same way, but just imagine all of the different things that you would want to change on your website inserted like this would be a lot of text. Thinking about what I just said, let's take a little bit more of a deeper look at CSS history. CSS solved a big problem. HTML was never intended to contain tags for formatting a web page. HTML was created to describe the content of a web page, like we've been doing on our tutorials. So you can see this opening H1 tag, this paragraph tag, little adjustments would be made automatically through the tags that you're creating. Remember, H1 is the largest text size that you can create. The smaller the number of the heading tag, the bigger the text is. So those little changes would happen naturally, but the actual CSS of changing everything else was not intended to be in the HTML document. When tags like font and color attributes were added to the HTML, it started to become a nightmare for developers. Development of large websites where fonts and color information were added to every single page, this became a long and expensive process. To solve this problem, the W3C created CSS. CSS removed the style formatting from the web page. So you can see that this is the basic format to write your CSS cascading style sheet format. Um, you can see the selector is the same as the tag that was on your HTML sheet. And then we're going to have whatever property you want to change about that selector. So in this case, it's the color of the text itself. The value is going to be the um, color or whatever you're specifically changing about that property. And then same thing here, you can see the property here is the font size, so the size the font is going to appear on your website, and the value is going to be the size specifically that you want it to turn to. Um, so that is how that's broken up. Every single tag on your page can be linked to. This way you can also group them together. So if I wanted to change both my H1s and my paragraphs all to the color blue with the font size 12, I can do that by doing H1 comma P and have the same um, grouping of the CSS together so it's all together I don't have to write it twice you can if you want to but it'll save you time to group those together as one so reviewing that one more time the selector points to the HTML element that you want to style 
The declaration block contains one or more declarations separated by semicolons. Each declaration includes a CSS property name and a value separated by a colon. Multiple CSS declarations are separated with semicolons and declaration blocks are surrounded by curly braces. If you scroll down to our example here, um, you can see that there is a paragraph tag on our HTML page and in order to link to it um, and change the color of the text to red and center it, you can link to it with the paragraph tag, our curly braces, and then we have um, color red text align center in that same format that you just saw above here with the properties and the values following. So in this case, P is a selector in CSS. It points to the HTML element that you want to style, which is that paragraph tag. Color is a property and red is the property value. Text align is a property and center is the property value. If you'd like to try this, there is a link right here. If you click on it, it will take you to that exact example here where you can adjust or add to the CSS that's here. For example, if I change the color that it is declaring it to be to blue instead of red and I run that, you can now see that my text on the right hand side is blue. So after learning this, we're going to go through and add a bit of basic style to a website that we create. This is going to be styles tutorial uh, to turn on on Google Classroom. So just like before, we're going to be creating a new document on liveweave.com. Set up the basic website using the following tags that we have been using. You want to declare your doc type, so doc type HTML with your opening and closing HTML to start your website. Inside of those tags, you're going to have your opening and closing head tags. You're going to have your body and your closing body under that. Remember, the body is where you see all of the information in your website. So anything else that you want to put on your website to actually show up goes in that body tag, which would include your footer tags, your header tags, which is kind of like the title that shows up, and a paragraph. Step number three is adding a list of your choice to the page. Um, no specified number of steps for this list, but it um, can be an unordered list, an ordered list, or a description list. So UL, OL, or DL. You're gonna change the background color of your list. So for example, if I created an unordered list, I can link to that UL tag and then inside of those curly braces, I would write background dash color colon, and then I would declare whatever color I wanted to change to. So for example, blue, followed by a semicolon, and it would change the background of that entire unordered list to blue. Change the font color within your list. So same thing, you can do it right within that same link to that unordered list if you chose to use an unordered list and it would be written as color colon and then followed by whatever color you'd like to make it and a semicolon and of course that closing curly um, brace. And then number six is going to be adding an H1, an H2, and an H3 tag to your page so you can see the difference between each of those. Again, please notice that H1 is going to be the largest, the smaller the number, the bigger the text appears on your website. Number seven, change the background color and font color for each separately. So although those are automatically going to show up as different sizes of text, link to each one of these individually on the style sheet and change the background color and the font color for each. Um, we already added the header tag inside of um, your body in that step, so you should already have that, but double check that you have that for step number eight. Um, that's the title of your website. And then you're going to, for number nine, create a border around the outside of your header tag. So linking to the header tag on our CSS page, you're going to then inside of those curly braces, write border colon. You can determine what type of border you would like to add onto there. So I'll have some options for you. One example would be solid. Another example would be dashed. 
and then you're going to determine how big you want your border to be. So it's going to be in pixels. So I can do um, like 5px as my size and it would be 5 pixels as the size of the border followed by the color that you want it to be. So for example, red followed by my semicolon and my curly brace. I'll show you examples of this afterwards. Um, number 10 is change any other styles you would like. Um, so anything else that you would like to add in to stylize your website. If you go to w3schools.com, there's a lot of really cool styles that you can add in if you want to go above and beyond. For example, maybe you want to add a gradient background to your website, look kind of cool. You're more than welcome to do any of that. Um, once you know the basic structure of CSS, really you can go through and add any of those things into your page. Of course, you're going to then save your LiveWeave. You should really save as you're going. Make sure you're always logged into your LiveWeave account. You should see an address up at the top of your page that says liveweave.com, followed by those letters, numbers, and symbols. That's how you know that your website is published and ready to be turned in. So go ahead and copy and paste that, and you're going to turn it in under Styles Tutorial on Google Classroom. So let's take a peek at my example that I created for you guys. So on this page, I set up the basic structure of the website with the correct information that it asks for. So you can see our header, you can see a paragraph, you can see each of those heading tags, H1, H2, and H3, our unordered list or your list of choice, our footer tag, and of course our opening, closing body, and HTML declaration tags. So this is what it's going to look like before we add any of our styles to our page. When you are done, it's going to look something like this, just as the bare basics, um, adding a border to your header. You're going to be changing the color of multiple sections of text, changing the background colors of different pieces, and adding in the color to the entire background of your list. So how does that work? Well. If I wanted to link to one of these tags specifically, so the first thing that it asks me to do is change the background color of my list. I'm going to link to my unordered list tag, followed by the curly brace, and I would write background dash color colon and the color I want it to be. And you can see that the background of that list is going to change. Now it does go naturally across the entire page, so if I wanted that to be a little bit smaller, I can change that um, by giving it a width. So again, I'd write width, colon, and then the number that I want it to be. So maybe let's try 100 pixels. Okay, so that's a good size for that list that we have there. And the other thing that it wants me to do to my list items is change the color of the actual text inside of there. So to link to text um, color, it's just color, colon, and I'll just make it white so it pops off that background. On my other example, I also added a border to this list. So it's border colon and um, you declare the size, what type of border you want, and the color. It doesn't matter what order um, you write that in. So let's do 5px. Um, I'll do dashed gray. Okay, and you can see that border that appears around the outside. On my example, I also added in a curved edge rather than a straight edge as my border. That is border dash radius and 20 px is a good standard go-to for that to make a nice clean curve around the outside edge all right so that is that first part plus a little bit extra okay and then it wants to link to each h1 um, h2 h3 our heading tags separately and change the background color and the color of the text for each to a different color so h1 color and I also want to change the background color okay 
so there's my H1. I'll also give that a width. Right, my H2. And my H3. Okay, so that was that step. And the last step is adding um, a style change to your header of your document, so the title that actually appears, and it wants us to add a border. So I'll link to header, border. Let's do 10 px this time. We'll do a solid border, and let's go with green. If you want to change the inside of that text box, you can absolutely do that too with background color. Change the font color. If you want to change the font size, it's written as font dash size. So a little bit extra than what you need, but you can see that this is the basic style that you're looking for of changing these items. Um, if you want to get fancy with this, there's a website that's called Adobe Color. And it generates these really nice color harmonies that you can use. So if you want to use these exact color codes that it gives you on here, if you want to create a color scheme for your website, you can copy and paste these color codes right from here. So if I go back, so instead of gray for this color, if I paste that in, you can see it changes to that nice violet color that I saw on Adobe Color. Um, so there's different color harmonies that you can use. Uh, analogous is going to be colors that are right next to each other on the color wheel. Monochromatic is one color, one hue with its shades and tints. Shades is adding black to a color. White is um, a tint adding white to the color. Triadic is three that are evenly spaced on the color wheel. Complementary are your most contrasting colors. They stand across from each other on the color wheel. So if you think about sports teams or holidays, they typically fall over there. Split complementary is almost the same thing, except it splits across, so it's just a little bit um, off to the ones right next to it instead of directly across. Okay, and you can try the other ones as well, but those are the basic ones that we learn in the intro art classes. You can also go to Explore, and you can see that there's a lot of different color harmonies on here. If you scroll through, you might find something that you might want to use. Um, the color of this year is this nice um, classic blue, so you can see that's the first one that shows up. You can look up style trends. It'll give you a lot of pictures and examples that you can look through. Again, if you click on the picture, it's going to give you those color codes. All you need to do is copy and paste them, and you can add them right into your LiveWeave page.